a lot's been spoken about Errol and um, a lot's been spoken about by you guys at home on the internet and all that kind of stuff um, about Liverpool and number sixes and what has and hasn't happened. Everyone's been talking about it. Um, Ryan Gravenberch was asked to play that deeper role today and um, I'm not going to put trying to influence you with, with my thoughts. I'll go you first, but I thought it was magnificent. Unbelievable. Like, I, genuinely, in the, in, the, in the first half, the there wasn't much where he had to really soak up and I've I, I seen a couple of other comments where people were asking him you need to come and get the ball off the centre halves really and, and start a, you know the pattern of playing and get us moving and, and there's an argument for that yeah but I think that'll come with with um, with the confidence of playing in that position do you know what I mean sometimes it's better to let the players that are comfortable looking at that side of the pitch have the ball and obviously I'll be there to screen at times and I don't think he had to do a great deal of that in the, in the first half but when things did get compact, he did always seem to be in the right areas. He seemed to be able to to break up play and get Liverpool back on the front foot. And in the first half, it didn't really come off because it didn't stick. And that wasn't necessarily his fault. But in the second half, mate, there were some moves there where, again, he, he gets the... the it, can, Ibu Canate plays the ball, rifles the ball into him. He kills it dead. To a little uh, half faint, plays the ball out wide, gets us on the front foot. Boom, two minutes later, Liverpool 1-0 up. And then there's that run in the second half when he goes through the midfield. Takes about three of them out of the game completely. But it's his, it's his profile as a player. He's so long and dangly, but he can be so direct. And the way he just glides across the pitch. I think you even said it in, um, in during the watch along, mate. It was it was Yaya Torre esque in the way that he did that. And I think if we see more of that, I think us as Liverpool fans will have a lot more confidence that he is someone that can can take the mantle of that six really and kind of make it his own. Because that's what we want, regardless of the, the, the type of player that gets brought in to ultimately do it. You want someone that's got a skill set that can make it their own and become bespoke do you know what I mean that's what you want in your specialist six and for me he just displayed so much uh, composure on the ball especially in some tight areas he, he, he was so difficult to get the ball off he was there to win tackles he broke them up he stopped them from getting uh, counters on us a couple of times he broke up play he was a real handful for them from the base of that midfield today and I just thought in the second half especially when he started to eventually start pulling the strings uh, and dictating the ball a little bit more and, and getting the ball in terms of through those lines. I just thought it was so refreshing to see that we had someone with that level of capability on the ball. And and, and again, it it was brave. There was a couple of opportunities there where he's making late runs into the box as well and he's driving our players. And I, I just thought it was, a, it was a breath of fresh air really for me to see someone in that position so commanding. But as you say, we're, we're very new to it all as, as we can all see. But I just thought he was excellent. And... It, 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 I suppose, like I say, there's a lot of pressure on him. He's not an idiot. Yeah. He knows Liverpool will just try to sign a fellow. They all will. Knows the manager said it in the press conference. Yeah. He knows everyone's here. He knows this is the one that all the fans have been, you know, all the pressure Crying on Richard. Yeah. And, I, and, we, and we were, we, listen, we're all in the same boat. I think we'd all still like Liverpool to do a bit of business. But that's it on him. He knows coming into that, I, I, if I'm shit, it's going to be World War Three. Yeah. And actually, the, the manager might not have thought I was good enough to do this in the first place because he tried to buy someone to do it. Mm. So for him to go out there and have the mental capacity to, I think he ran the game. Yeah. Second half, it was the Ryan Gravenberg show in particular. Yeah. First half was a little bit, uh, you could, I thought he actually was better defensively and, and nipping in and doing his, his work. And also you saw some nice bits of moments to get Liverpool out. Second half, as soon as it opened up a little bit more, maybe it switched tired or, 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 or you know, whatever. He, he just he was completely dominant, and to have that mental strength to go actually uh, when you when you know everyone's crying out and all eyes are on you. They're praying for uh, a mistake. All, they're, they're well, all eyes are on you. Mistake, all yeah. eyes are on you because that's that's the position. You know, Richard Hughes is in the stands, and he's probably looking at it thinking, "Oh, I hope this works out as well." Because the men didn't come. Fair play to Gravenberch because the, the the mental strength to, to show. Listen, I'm just going to run this game, and I'm going to take control of it, and I'm going to make it my game. Fair play. But again, it just goes to show the levels that you've got to operate at when you're in the transfer market as well. Because if they're going to be the performances, and uh, you know, I, I'm guilty of saying it for for a number of players last season, and you know, Sabozlai in particular got to a level, and you know, he put in some belt of performances, and said that's the baseline. Now I don't want to see you drop below that. And obviously, players are picks and troughs, and it's ups and downs. And I genuinely just think for someone like him now. If that if that is if that can be a consistent baseline of how you perform and, and you know that's the, the that's the bar for you, it is very difficult to go and buy a player that's going to then come and upset you in, in in that position because and that's what he wants more and you know I'm going to play my best footy and good luck to anybody that can play this position better than me or play better than I'm playing at the minute and I think that'll be the difficult thing that Liverpool will find themselves in 
to a point, obviously, once the transfer window's closed, you've, you've kind of made your bed and you've got to lie in it. But at this moment in time, you just want to make sure that, that that manager just thinks you're the best person for that job right here and now. And as long as you're fit, I'm just going to keep playing you in that position and I'm just going to keep letting you run the game as you did as you said there in that second half he absolutely ran it and it was yep. he was good value for money in there as well because he didn't look out of his depth and it's a new position with new instructions a new setup and he just looked so comfortable on the ball and as you say i think a lot of his his natural skills and attributes really came to to the fo- to the front in a large part portions of that second half i suppose and I need to, clar- again, you have to clarify things on the incest because things get taken out of context or, or whatever. Um, and I still think Liverpool need to do transfer business. I hope they do. But Edel, if Liverpool had just signed a number six, say that was Martins with Mendy's debut and he played like that, we would be Yo, and yeah. we'd be like, wow, that's up there with like good, like top, we've seen debuts. Rodriesque and all the rest it, of it. it. Yeah, it, it, we'd be waxing lyrical and, and I get it, but this is what I said to you before about this time round, seeing these players now, for me, you know, I can take the transfers, I can I can compartmentalise it, but I wanted to see more from the lads that we already had. And I, and I think... Well, you, the manager said that in his press conference, and he said, we, you know, players can get... Someone said to him, "You can't. how do you get better without signing people? And he said, because coaching, like, we, 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 yeah. that's, our, that's our job. We'll make you better. Yeah. And I, and I think there's something to it, and, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be forgotten so easily just because the transfer windows are, are, you can are do around both. us. You can do both. <laughs> but I, I'd like to see Liverpool doing both yeah, as absolutely. well and equip 100%. us, equip us in, the, in the best possible way. And it's not just to pacify the fans, but to, to put the club in the best position that we can possibly be in. Do you know what I mean? We know what we're up against. We know the juggernaut that is Manchester City. We know that they're not just going to drop off and go away anytime soon. We know that they have a world-class six at the base of their midfield. That helps them them tick over and is a you know a foundation for everything good that they're able to do but i i've craven seeing more from some of the lads that we had last year that we hyped up 12 months ago was 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 um you know waxing lyrical about and saying how much they're going to be a game changer to our midfield well there's three of them 12 months down the line now absolutely again first time that i'm seeing them all like really starting to play together in that in that midfield because there's not been many games where they've started together certainly we want to see more from them as well. And I think that is going to be so crucial for us this season. If we can get that level out of them three consistently, you know, suppose like able to do what he does, Graven Birch showing that he's very dynamic in, in terms of his whole gameplay. And then obviously McAllister just being a bit of a world beater. I think it's problems for other teams. And I think it's a it's a good headache for Arnie Slot to have, really. Absolutely. Then Graven Birch then to round up, give him a rating out of 10 for his performance over the switch. Yeah. Definitely up there for shouting man of the match for me. I, I'd say it's it's. I don't. I want to leave him room to grow. Nine, but yeah, I am very very much in. That I'm, I'm gonna say nine. I, I th- we we I think we go along with nine. So there you go. Let us know if you think differently in the comment section below. 